all rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. We saw some real development in some of our young offensive linemen, tight ends, uh, some young running backs. Just you can see a daily improvement in those guys. And uh, it was a pretty physical spring, but it was necessary. What's Trending is presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. The goal from year to year is to improve, to get better. With spring football practice finish, which position groups do you feel like will be improved from last year to this year? And a lot of folks are talking about this. And, and we're, we're now about, hey, what do you think about this? We're going to be better at this? We're going to be worse at this? Uh, and so this is the buzz here in a, early April in Cougar Nation. And, and, and you got to go right to the quarterbacks. And I think the quarterbacks will be better. I think the position group today is better than it was last year at this time. Um, and you're like, what? Are you nuts? Well, Keaton Slovis was here, but there was nothing behind him, right? All new guys. Uh, and when including Keaton himself, yeah, including himself, and and so he's the starter. And then when he got hurt, uh, we had total inexperience coming in, and that inexperience showed up in in Jake Rett's last play. And who who wouldn't be out of their mind? It was the first go at Division One football. This year you got two guys. You haven't named a starter yet, but you got Bohannon and Retzlaff. Your your quarterback room is already deeper than it was last year at this time, with two yeah. players who've experienced football at this level. And then you got the younger guys, Ryder Burton and company, uh, the transfer from Western Michigan, or Grayson uh, Borgay, who's, who's looked really good. Yep. So you got those guys in there too. The quarterback room, as a whole, is in better shape as a position group right now than it was a year ago. Agree? Disagree? I I like that one. Still, uh, still need to prove it. Like neither Jake Retzloff nor Gary Bohannon have won a game at BYU, so I'm excited to watch them compete. Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, still kind of in the show me stage a little bit with, with that group. Uh, the safeties, I believe, will be better from last year. They had some notable injuries that really wiped them out. Um, so wiped them all out. <laughs> almost everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Michael Harper is back off an ACL. Talon Alfrey had a fall camp injury that kept him out for the first half of the season. Ethan Slade was a real consistent guy that uh, kind of started as a backup, was a, a starter. He got hurt eventually. Tanner Wall got hurt eventually. Crew Wakely and Raider DeMooney and Preston Rex were you guys. So there were seven or eight guys that have experience, which is valuable. Now when you throw someone in this, you're, they've played before. They've played at Texas. Yeah. They've played against TCU, blah, blah, blah. New guys like Tommy Prassis, a freshman who's only 17, have uh, really shown well apparently. Mm -hmm. As a guy who could press for some backup playing time, not starter minutes quite yet, uh, Chika Ebunoha also in that group. So that's interesting. Tight ends, to me, I expect to be better as well. Did not get the production that we probably wanted out of Isaac Rex. 34 catches, 422 yards, three touchdowns. It's not bad, but it's not like what Isaac Rex, I think he could have been a 60, 606 guy. Isaac with a healthy ankle is yes. a different Isaac. Yes, he's a different Isaac, as Spencer chronicled last week in Frisco. He looks way better. The Keanu Hill experiment has worked, apparently, in spring, where Keanu is good. As a pass catcher, and he's a good enough blocker. He's, Aaron Roderick told me Saturday he's as good of a blocker at tight end as anybody we've got on the roster. Then you've got Renner Swanson, who turned some heads in spring. High-profile recruit, big-time get. Jackson Bowers, don't forget about him. Uh, redshirted last year, ESPN 300 guy out of high school. Uh, and then Ethan Erickson, to me, is like the sneaky guy. He had a touchdown catch against East Carolina two years ago that we forget about that was incredible. He got hurt. He... He uh, sat out spring with a foot injury. He'll be in the mix as well. So, And, and then Ray Paulo and uh, Matava Tase, they come in and they block quite a bit. Um, more of those kind of H tight ends as opposed to the uh, verticality of the others down the field. So I, I think that group will be improved as well. I'm excited about the tight end. I'm going to parlay from the tight end over to the receivers. Nice Vegas where guy. Ke <laughs> Keanu used to hang out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, uh, and, and look at this group. I think this group's going to be yep. much better than it was last year. One, because it's older. Uh, wiser and preferably stronger and faster um, and healthy. And they, healthy, wealthy, and wise? They did, throw an NIO money in there? Yeah, let's do that. They didn't come <laughs> into the season healthy. It's like everyone just kind of joined yeah. at certain times. Paul Campbell's rough for these But guys. Chase Roberts is the leader. Cody Epps had a good spring. I think Darius Laster will be the breakout guy. He showed mm -hmm. a lot. Um, you got Marion and uh, Parker Kingston. Um, there's a couple of guys back from missions. I mean, this is a full Cody room. Hagen specifically yeah. is a big time. This yeah. may be uh, the, the deepest the room has ever been 
at BYU. Whoa! But that doesn't mean Whoa. it's full of All-Americans. I'm right. just talking about a deep room yeah. that's better than it was last year as it sits today coming out of spring, yeah. largely because of health. And Parker Kingston showed a lot as a freshman. You know, now let him be a sophomore. Let him be older and, and, and find his way in that mix. And I still would love to see us line up five wide and just go and utilize all these weapons in their seat. I don't know if we've been watching up, tight over footage. I don't, just... I don't know if we lined up five wide one time last year where it was like they can't guard them all. And then you throw Keanu in there as a tight end who can can beat a linebacker. And, and you can, it screams optimism. Um, you know, and the, and the key is for these groups that we're talking about that are that are in better shape than maybe they were last year is getting through fall healthy, especially talking about your safeties, um, the receiver group, uh, running backs. We'll talk in a minute. They didn't get through fall healthy. There's Lost no their body group where Robbins broke a rib. Yes. Yes. That torpedo the running game. They walked and into the other the kids season. a freshman out of out of El Paso. Yep. You know, and so so that was the that was the thing going in. So these groups that look good today need to get through fall camp. And I don't know how you do it with having a physical camp and also preserving your guys. But but last year we had a physical camp and it seemed like the team was never at full strength the whole season. There's always the how physical is too physical. Yeah. If you're not physical enough, suddenly you're not tackling, and hey, we, you weren't physical enough. Oh, we were overly physical, and now we're hurt or injured. Like, it's hard to sort of balance that narrative. Because it's football, and it's physical. And no, no one wants to say, yeah, we didn't tackle very much. <laughs> yeah, Remember we when Kenya Matalolo said that at Navy? Navy. And, and they didn't tackle anybody, and it was like, well, yeah, BYU won 53. But at the same time, you can't go into the season opener without any safeties. You just, right. you, somehow you've got right. to get... You got to get your guys to the finish line so yep. they can start. Yep. And you can't have your starting running back with a broken rib. Nope. So at some point, and you have to have some luck, right? Yeah. But but the goal is, however you figure it out, the goal is you have to be healthy for Southern Illinois. A note on that uh, that is awesome about what BYU does with spring ball. They do it very early. Yeah. Very early. It gives one coach in particular told me it gives us more time to get healthy during the summer. It really does. And there's a couple of guys. That are using that time right yeah, now. Yes, there are. To get yes, there are. I want to add offensive line to this conversation. Last year, certainly, you're going to lose a very good player in Kingsley Suamati at left tackle. You're going to lose Paul Miley, who had great experience uh, going to the Rose Bowl yeah. with Utah and starting last year for BYU. Sometimes at at guard, you lose those two, but you bring back some quality, and you've changed the coach to T.J. Woods. This group's got to be better. the The main reason BYU goes five and seven last year is because they don't have a run game. That was, that was the biggest issue with BYU football. But look at the guys you bring back. Pay was big time to get back. Kime's going to be a guy. Lapuahu is back as a starter. Etienne's going to move to left tackle and be the guy. Sonny Makassini and others. This group, with some returning experience and a new coach and a new mindset and a new philosophy, needs to be way better. If BYU is just okay at running the ball instead of terrible, they win another game somewhere, oh, yeah. and they go to a bowl game. Absolutely. Now, it doesn't automatically mean you just do it, but I'm confident that BYU can get six wins. If they can have just some semblance of a run game. It's year two of L.J. Martin. He's not fresh off that yellow bus. He is a sophomore and the guy, which brings us to topic two. Uh, yeah, and so let's go to the other side. Which of these position groups needs to be addressed further as camp has ended? And the next camp that we see, I think it's the very end of July, and it's the one that gets you ready for the openers. Uh, the first thought is quarterbacks, where it's like, okay, yeah. who's because when we say need to be addressed, we're not just talking about like go to the portal and find a good player that can because they're in not going to go get a quarterback. They're not. Yeah, it is uh, the other angle of that to me is the pr show me the prove yourself, prove me now herewith, right? Show me quarterbacks that you're going to execute and be good enough at this level, because I don't walk into the season feeling like oh BYU is going to win nine plus and compete for a Big Twelve title. We're not in that space. We walked into 2022 with that mindset because of how 21 went and the returners. We don't have that combination this year. What we have is a group that we feel like can get to a bowl game, and I would love to feel like, hey, the ball bounces well and you stay healthy, you can get to eight wins. An eight-win season in a Power 5 conference would be awesome for this program. But we got to make a bowl game, dog. We didn't last year, two and seven, this close, disappointing. So quarterbacks uh, to start are, are the, hey, you got to show me that you can execute against Power 5 competition. Yeah, and, and you're not going to see that until uh, week, four. week four. So so there'll be some mystery going in. With Slovis, we had seen it at USC and we'd seen it at Pitt uh, and had a lot of experience. And you know what? I still think Slovis was the answer. But, but he had to stay healthy and he didn't. 
and it, you know he got hurt early. He got hurt early, and that changed everything because behind him was no experience. So that won't be the case this year. Yeah, it Which won't be the good, case like this you year because yeah. you got blood behind that's been in. If it's Jake, Gary's yeah. ready. If it's Gary, Jake's ready. And the running backs is another area that that I think uh, needs some work, meaning um, it's unproven. You got uh, L.J. Martin who's back, uh, coming into his sophomore season. Yeah, Rapati missed last year. Um, we hear great things about Rapati uh, with what he was able to do at spring. Um, but again, it's been a while since he's been in there. Uh, and you see a bunch of other guys in that room. I have a feeling in the portal they'll be looking around, and if there's a running back, they'll grab one. Just because you can never have you too many. You think they'll add a running back? I think they will. Okay. But you, you can never have too many, and there's not one behemoth right even Aiden Robbins was going to be the physically thousand as yard opposed guy. to production maybe a little mixture it, of both because it feels like LJ is RB1 I, I asked Aaron as much he, he didn't say yeah he's RB1 yeah. but I think based on last year we can walk in confidently saying and LG you need Martin's another one the guy you need another one sure. in the event that and maybe it's Rapati or maybe it's Davis um, or it's a, a big 240 pound guy from wherever that you just go yes Yes, come the in. Chris Brooks, Aiden Robbins yeah, type. Yeah. yeah, and they've done that. There's, there's, they've done that last the couple history of years. Of Aiden Robbins was going to be the, it was going to be the, you know, as, playing as, with like as a broken song. rib. And, and, and then we, then he it was never healthy yeah. until the, the end, end of the, of the season. season. And then we saw the Oklahoma 182 yards, which is and, the film I'm handing to every NFL scout if right. I'm him. And I'm pretty sure that game is why he's, he's in the, he's in the mix. He's in the mix and not it gave coming him a back. chance to bounce. If he doesn't have the Oklahoma game. He may be here still. Yeah, which would be awesome. Which would have been awesome. Yeah. But beating Oklahoma would have been more. And awesome. we ran him different at the end too. We let him just go. Hey, you're a straight ahead. Little runner. inside go zone. And yep. do that. So I'm I'm watching that area. The defensive line has been a big popular topic because BYU couldn't stop the run and they couldn't get to the quarterback. And when Jay Hill came in and looked around, and he's like, I need some Kafusis. But as Bronson comes into the room, I need some Bronsons, but uh, always. there weren't any. There are um, two linebackers, like last name Kafuzi. And so he's put that emphasis in recruiting and in development. Uh, we visited with uh, uh, Isaiah Banya, and we visited with Tyler Batty. Those guys rush ends back with, with revised bodies and, and attitude to, to get to the quarterback. Brought in some run stoppers from, from junior college. And I think that area, too, if there's a couple out there, um, you can plug those guys in. You don't have to hand them the 500-page playbook. You hand them three. Tackle the guy with the ball. You're, you're yeah, the left get tackle. After it. You're Hopefully, the right tackle. Tui Saili is a baller. Yeah. The hope is that he's the next Kairos Tonga type, right? A D tackle that can get you to third and long. It takes two guys to block. After, yes, after first, first and second down, you get some stops there. That'd be nice. I have questions about cornerbacks. Uh, Jacob Robinson's clearly a guy, but... Who else? You lost Eddie Heckard and Camden Garrett. Um, so you have Maury Bamba, Evan Johnson, Marcus McKenzie, Jaden Dunlap, Koa Eldridge. Those are the other guys who emerges at cornerback. Um, and then punter, obviously, you're losing one of the greatest, if not the greatest punter BYU's NFL ever had. NFL punter. Lee Johnson and Ryan Rico are the two greatest punters BYU's ever had. Sam Vanderhaar from Pitt, uh, given a scholarship. Landon Rico going to compete there as well. That's Ryan's younger brother. So we'll see who the punter is. We've kind of the last four years just been like we're super comfortable, right, with what's happened there because Ryan Rico was awesome. Right. It gave, it put BYU in position to win a bunch of games, and if they lost, maybe it was closer than it would have been. He flipped a lot of fields. He flipped a lot of fields. He was awesome, man. Uh, no bigger fan of Ryan Rico than this guy. <laughs> I, I enjoyed watching punts finally. Johnny <laughs> Linehan, I know what you felt. 